In this lesson, we'll learn how to easily animate between Webflow's native color modes by using GSAP. First, we need a variable collection named theme to handle our color mode switching, and it must have the name theme because the code will only animate the variables that are inside of our theme collection. Inside this collection, we can create however many modes we'd like, and optionally, we can create a separate brand collection to switch between different brand colors, but these brand variables will not be animated directly. Only the variables inside of our theme collection will be animated. So we'll want to reference those brand variables in the theme collection. Next, we need classes that start with u-theme- and then the name of our theme. And we need to apply the corresponding theme to that class. So I have a U-theme light that's set to the light theme and a U-theme dark class set to the dark theme. And for any other themes we have, we would need a U-theme class for it. Now this last word can be anything we'd like. I could call it U-theme sunset and maybe the first one is U-theme sunrise. And we need to keep track of this last word because when we say animate, we'll use that last word. We'll say animate to the sunrise theme or the sunset theme. So this class name is what defines the actual name of our theme in the code. Now, optionally, we can have brand modes. And if you're not using brand mode, you're just animating between themes, then these classes are completely optional here. But if you are using brands as well, we would need to have a U dash brand dash. And the last word could be a number or any kind of word. We could say U brand orange, U brand vibrant or playful, um, anything we'd like there. And when we combine those together, like if we have a U theme dark, and then we also have a U brand three, it can change the brand color and the theme of an element. For our code, we just need to include this color theme collector JS. It'll gather up all our color themes for us to animate between. Any of our animations need to be included inside this color themes ready event. This color themes ready will only run after the DOM content is loaded. So there's no need to include this inside a DOM content loaded. We can animate any element to any theme. So let's say we want to animate maybe the entire body. And then these values here are based on the U dash theme dash classes we created and U dash brand dash. So whatever was the last word we used for these classes is what we would plug in here. I had U dash theme dash dark and light and then U dash brand dash one, two, and three. So I'll animate to dark mode in the third brand and that animates everything fine there. If I don't include the brand, it'll just grab the first brand class we created. So that was green in this case. Or if we don't have brands, we can just include light and dark. Now, if we don't include the light or dark, it'll just animate to the first theme class we created, which was light mode in this case. So we could animate a menu whenever it opens. We could animate a section or the whole page or a nav when we scroll in. We can animate any element to any theme. So for this first example, when we scroll into view of a section, we want the nav to animate to the matching theme and brand color whenever we enter view of that section. So here in Webflow, I've created some component variants where on each section, I can choose the theme and I can also choose the brand I want to use for each section. Section. But on top of that, we also need to tell the code which brand and which theme we want to animate the nav to when we scroll into view of this section. So to do that, I went ahead and created some data attributes. I have a data animate theme to, and then I've linked that to a component field and a data animate brand to. And again, I've linked that to a component field. And what that means is for this section, I need to tell the code that I want to animate the theme of the nav to light and the brand of the nav to one. And then for the next section, I want to animate the theme of the nav to dark when this section comes in view and the brand of the nav to three when this section is in view. So if we take a look at our code here, what we're doing is targeting every element that has a data animate theme to. And when the top of that section, that element reaches 10% from the top of the screen. So right when it's here at the top, we're going to go ahead and animate our entire nav component, which is the class of my nav bar in this case. And we're animating it to the theme and to the brand that we passed into these data attributes. So whatever the value of our theme was and whatever the value of our brand was, that's what we're going to animate this nav to. For this next example, when a section comes into view, we want to animate the entire body to a new brand and a new theme. 
So here in Webflow, I've actually not applied any theme or any brand to each section. So we'll notice all of our sections look the same, but then we have data attributes on each section to tell it what we wanna animate the body's theme to and what we wanna animate the body brand to. So we have data animate theme to, data animate brand to, and then on each section, we're just passing in different values that we want to animate to here. So the code's gonna look pretty similar to the previous example, except that the element we're actually animating in this case is the entire body, and it's animating to whichever theme and brand we passed in for this particular section. And our trigger is actually gonna be when the top of this section reaches the center of the screen this time, so right when it's halfway in view. For this third example, the nav's gonna start with a transparent background color. When we scroll down just a little bit, the background will become solid, and the entire nav will animate to light mode. And when we scroll back up, it goes back to dark with a transparent background. So if we hop over into Webflow, we'll notice that on the entire nav component class, I've set the theme to dark. And on whichever element we set this theme here, that's the element we're gonna want to animate to the light theme. Now for the background element here, I have a position absolute sort of background div. That way we don't have to animate its background color to transparent. Uh, the background can just stay set to the theme background variable since that color will animate between light and dark. And then instead we can just animate the opacity of this entire position absolute div. That way we're just kind of revealing it like so. Now, if we hop over into our code, we'll notice that when we scroll down 100 pixels from the top of the body, we'll go ahead and animate the entire nav component where we set our dark theme over to the light theme. And then we'll animate that position absolute sort of background div from an opacity of zero back to the full opacity that we have set in Webflow. So on page load, it'll be opacity zero and it will animate back to full opacity when we scroll down. So that's how to use the theme collector. Here's how it works behind the scenes. We need to get all the variable names and values inside the theme collection. Sadly, there's no easy way to get that. We can list all the styles on the root HTML element but this doesn't show us the variable names. It just shows the regular CSS properties and values on that root element. If we know the exact name of our variable, we can look up its value on the root element, but this would require us to list out all the variable names inside our theme collection within our JavaScript, and it wouldn't automatically update if we add a new variable to that theme collection later. If we wanna automatically retrieve those theme variables, we'll have to search inside Webflow's CSS style sheet. The style sheet is hosted externally, so we have to use JavaScript fetch to get this, and then we can search for all the theme variables on the root element in the style sheet. Now it takes several milliseconds to fetch this on a good connection, which is why we have that event to only run our animation after the themes are retrieved. But we don't wanna to have to keep waiting every time we switch pages to research the style sheet. So we're saving those theme variables inside local storage, and we'll only search the style sheet again if the publish date of our site changes. The code retrieves all of the theme variables and their values from that style sheet, but the values are set to other variables and we can't animate between these. We need the actual hex codes. So once we have all of the theme variable names, we can get each of their values one by one on that root HTML element. But the values can be different depending on the theme that's set on it. And for some of these variables, it can also change depending on the brand that's set. So from that style sheet, we retrieve every class that starts with u-theme- and every class that starts with u-brand- and then the code tests each of the possible combinations together. So what does a class like uTheme Dark look like with uBrand2? It'll temporarily add those two classes to the root element, and then it'll check each theme variable name to get their value with those two combinations, and then it'll remove it before we can even see it. And that way we can animate to any theme and any brand in every possible combination. So that's how to use the color collector and how it works. I can't wait to see how you animate color in Webflow.